Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of subacute vessel closure and a balloon rupture that was actually helpful. The patient is an 80-year-old woman with hypertension and hyperlipidemia. She has been having classic symptoms of angina while gardening and taking her usual walks. Echocardiograms show no wall motion abnormalities and a preserved ejection fraction. But nuclear stress testing showed a large area of anterior and lateral ischemia, so she was referred by her cardiologist for cath. On cath, her RCA had only minor irregularities, and the left circumflex had an 80% stenosis in the Smith section. The LAD, uh, shown here, um, has severe uh, proximal and mid-segment disease. So it looked fairly straightforward, and our 80-year-old lady did not want cabbage, uh, so we went ahead with uh, PCI. Both the LED and diagonal branches wired uh, very easily, and we went ahead and pre-dilated with a 2.5 millimeter balloon. However, uh, even when inflating up to a pressure of 14 atmospheres, uh, there was still a clear residual waste in the balloon. And frankly, this was a little surprising. Uh, the angiogram was a bit uh, misleading. Uh, the lesion did not look particularly uh, calcified. But one word of caution, uh, do not place a stent until you can fully expand the lesion. Uh, if you deploy a stent and only then realize you can't expand it, well, that's big trouble, and you can be headed for emergency bypass uh, because of a high risk of stent thrombosis and acute closure. So what can you do if you're faced with a situation where you can't dilate your lesion, uh, but you are at a uh, community hospital? Well, uh, at most community hospitals, uh, you won't have access to shockwave, and uh, coronary atherectomy uh, is not permitted uh, without the cardiac surgical backup. So uh, the first thing to try is, is more, to try more, a very American thing to do, more force, uh, longer time. I suggest uh, using short, uh, non-compliant balloons and inflating at high pressures, 20, 20 atmospheres, often uh, significantly higher. Uh, you may have to keep the balloons inflated longer, uh, 30 to 60 seconds or more uh, for the lesion to crack. Uh, cycling inflation pressures, uh, for example, 20 atmospheres, then 12, then 20 again, uh, can sometimes help. Uh, if just more force doesn't work, uh, you can try to focus the force or deliver it uh, asymmetrically. So uh, scoring balloons, uh, which are basically balloons with a wire wrapped around it, uh, focus the inflation force on the wire, which then amplifies the force locally uh, by uh, 15 to 25 fold. And, and this can crack the surface of the lesion and allow subsequent uh, dilation. Uh, cutting balloons um, have uh, tiny blades around them that have a similar effect, but at community hospitals, uh, they cannot be used outside of stented segments. And unfortunately, uh, neither scoring balloons nor cutting balloons are, are particularly deliverable. So um, if you can't get these balloons to your lesion, a nice alternative is to inflate a regular NC balloon with one or more buddy wires um, uh, to score the lesion. Uh, another strategy is to deliver an asymmetric force, in other words, not evenly divided around the circumference of the vessel. A nice way of doing this is to inflate two balloons in the lesion at the same time. Uh, this will cause high pressure at the contact points of the balloons uh, with the vessel and then low pressure elsewhere. Uh, this pressure differential across the surface of the lesion can sometimes cause it to crack. All right, so we went ahead and tried uh, these techniques. Uh, we tried more force in longer times, a 3.0 millimeter NC balloon up to 24 atmospheres in 45 seconds, a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon up to 26 atmospheres in 45 seconds. We did multiple consecutive inflations, but no luck, uh, the lesion uh, would not yield. We then tried to focus the force. We were able to pass an androscope balloon, no luck. We inflated an NC balloon with a couple of buddy wires in place, uh, still no luck. Uh, we tried to inflate a uh, two 2.5 millimeter balloons, and still uh, the lesion uh, would not yield. So uh, at this point, we uh, decided that this was a good place to stop. Uh, the patient was uh, doing fine. Uh, the LED looked unchanged. Uh, there was no perforation of the section. And we thought it was best at this point to refer her to a tertiary center for intravascular orthotripsy or for uh, atherectomy. Uh, we didn't want to get too aggressive at a community hospital. 
But uh, 30 minutes after she got to the recovery room, she developed severe chest pain. Uh, she was profusely diaphoretic. She looked terrible. An ECG showed anterior STEMI, and we uh, took her immediately back to the cath lab. And on the diagnostic angiogram, not surprisingly, uh, there was subacute closure of the LED. The proximal LED is now 100% occluded. We uh, wired the LED with a little bit of difficulty, but a probe water eventually passed, and we dilated the LED with a 2.5 millimeter balloon. So flow was reestablished in the LED after angioplasty. Uh, there still is no obvious dissection in the LED, even in retrospect, but there probably was microdissection or endothelial injury from all the high pressure balloon inflations uh, that uh, was uh, thrombogenic. So, so what do we do now? Uh, do we put this patient on a 2B3A inhibitor heparin, a balloon pump, and, and fly her urgently to the tertiary center? Uh, or, or do we somehow try to get this open? Well, uh, we actually decided to give it another shot. Uh, there is another technique that we haven't tried. So we decided to try a mechanical lesion modification technique. Now, typically, uh, this is done with coronary atherectomy, but in the US, that is not permitted at a community hospital uh, without surgical backup. Uh, intravascular lithotripsy is another possibility. The shockwave system is now available commercially, but it is still quite expensive, and most community hospitals uh, do not have the system. So another option, uh, which is uh, quite often forgotten, is uh, balloon-assisted microdissection, or the BAM technique, also known as granitoplasty. Um, the idea is to intentionally rupture a balloon in the lesion. The force of the balloon rupture can then crack the surface of the lesion, allowing for subsequent uh, balloon dilation. To uh, do this, uh, you pass a small compliant balloon into the lesion. You make sure that there are no uh, bubbles in your endoflator line, and you inflate the balloon to very high pressures, usually more than 30 atmospheres, to intentionally rupture the balloon. Now, you should be aware that balloon rupture is much more easily seen as a sudden drop in pressure in the endoflator dial than on fluoroscopy. So as soon as you see a rapid pressure drop on your endoflator dial, you want to quickly draw vacuum in the endoflator to aspirate any debris. Sometimes you'll need to do this a couple of times uh, to crack the uh, surface of the lesion sufficiently. The uh, BAM technique is generally safe with uh, small balloons, and perforations are quite rare. So we went to work. We did try a cutting balloon first. Uh, we are now in a STEMI situation, so cutting balloons are allowed outside of, of a stent at hospitals without the surgical backup. But the cutting balloons had no effect. Uh, we next did BAM. We intentionally ruptured a 2.0 millimeter balloon in a lesion at 30 atmospheres. And after BAM, a 3.0 millimeter compliant balloon uh, fully expanded. The uh, pressure from the rupture balloon uh, likely sufficiently cracked the surface of the lesion to now allow the compliant balloon to fully expand. We did a quick angio uh, to confirm that there was no perforation, and uh, it was now uh, safe uh, to place the stent. We uh, deployed a long uh, 3.0 millimeter drug balloon stent, uh, which also expanded fully. Uh, we then did OCT. Now, OCT may have actually been useful uh, in this case uh, pre-PCI, and it probably should be done more often. A lot of us have uh, given up on our ability to predict whether a calcified lesion will expand uh, based on just an angiogram. So on OCT, we see that our stent is uh, reasonably well expanded. Uh, you can actually see that there's uh, calcium in the vessel wall uh, throughout the lesion. Uh, the uh, crack section in the proximal LED is nicely covered by the stent. Um, we did do a little bit more uh, post dilation after this with a 3.5 millimeter balloon uh, to improve the stent deposition approximately, and we deployed another stent uh, distally uh, to cover a small uh, distal edge dissection. So uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result, which we thought was uh, quite uh, satisfactory. Uh, there was 0% residual stenosis in the LED. Uh, the diagonal remained nicely open. Um, the patient came back for stage PCI of the circumflex a couple of days later, and then was then uh, discharged home uh, in uh, good condition. 
All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, so first, uh, as this case illustrates, uh, the angiogram does not always reliably predict whether a lesion will dilate. Uh, calcified lesions can sometimes dilate easily, and uh, while you may have a hard time with lesions that do not appear particularly calcified, uh, pre-PCI intravascular imaging uh, can be informative. But if you find yourself in a situation where your lesion will not dilate, remember not to stent until the lesion can be fully expanded. We looked at three ways to dilate a tough lesion at a community hospital. Uh, first line is to use more force uh, for a longer period of time, short NC balloons, higher pressures, 20 atmospheres or more, longer inflations. Second line is to focus the force or to uh, deploy asymmetric force. Uh, use scoring balloons, cutting balloons uh, if you're inside a stent, uh, perform inflations with uh, buddy wires in place, or uh, simultaneously inflate uh, two balloons. Third line is a lesion modification. At a community hospital, you can try uh, balloon-assisted uh, microdissection, the BAM technique, often effective, often forgotten, and usually safe. Finally, if nothing works, uh, you can always refer to a tertiary center uh, for intravascular lithotripsy, atherectomy, uh, dissection reentry techniques, and of course, cabbage. Thank you for watching.